Hi there book friends and welcome to my channel. Today I am doing a book unhaul because I'm currently moving so I went through all my books um, using the Marie Kondo method which is to go through all your books and decide which ones bring you joy. So that actually helped me get rid of a lot of books. I've got a huge pile I've got a big box of books that I'm going to be donating to my local library. My family's going to be looking through the books first and see if there's any books in there that they want to keep. And I have a few friends who will go through it as well and then I'll donate the rest to my li library. But yeah, you know, I just have so many books. I, I think I have... I think I have almost 500 books. Which is a lot. <laughs> and I'm not going to have the space for all these books and where I'm going to be living. I'm through and I have so many books I'm getting rid of so I'm just gonna try to give a brief description on some of them and some of them I'm just gonna show you because I don't even know why I have some of them but anyway without any further introduction let's get into the books that I'm unhauling all right I have here this series the time travelers book one time travelers uh, the time thief book two and time quake this is a trilogy that I read like five years ago or something and I enjoyed it but it didn't leave a huge impression on me and I'm really not the biggest fan of time traveling in stories because I find it too convoluted and it doesn't always make sense and I feel like there are too many plot holes and this series was okay it just wasn't anything amazing for me so I'm gonna be going to be donating it. Next I have here a very different section I have Farmer Boy, Little House in the Big Woods, The First Four Years, On the Banks of Plum Creek, and Little Town on the Prairie. These are all by the same author, and these are the Little House on the Prairie books. I had the first one, but it got spilt. It um, caught water on it, and it turned in, and it got a little bit moldy, so I had to throw it out. But I just am not a big fan of these books I think I read one of them years and years ago and I thought it was okay I'm just they just don't have any special meaning for me next book's gone okay next book I have here is Ferris by Gail Carson Levi I enjoyed this book when I read it but again it didn't really impress me that much in terms of story or characters and and from what I remember I I enjoyed it but I just don't think I need to keep it on my shelves so I'm gonna give it to someone else who wants who is looking to read some sort of a fantasy fairy tale esque book. The next one I have here is Lemony Snicket. When did you see her last? I even still have the tag on it for like a dollar fifty. And this is the second book in it in the series by Lemony Snicket. And I don't have the first book, and I haven't read it, and I'm not going to. So I'm gonna be donating this as well. Ooh. Next one I have is The Moon by Night, Madeline Lay and Gail. Gail. She was the one who wrote A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, I enjoyed A Wrinkle in Time, but I just, this one, I don't know. I don't really care about, so goodbye. Wah! This next book is, was a little bit hard, but in the end, I think it's it's better off if I give it to someone else. And that is Tyler Johnson Was Here by J, J. Coles. I bought this book. It's pretty new, actually. I bought it like eight months ago, and I read it. I overall enjoyed it, but it just didn't get the message across quite as well as some of the other books that I've read talking about this issue. If you don't know, it's about the Black Lives Matter movement and I just didn't feel like it did as good a job as Thug or Dear Martin or those kind of books. My big issue with this book was that it tells us uh, in, the, bleh, in the introduction that his brother was killed. We spend like half the book of him looking for his brother and trying to figure out what happened to his brother. So there's no real mystery or suspense there because we already know his brother is dead. So it's just kind of like, yeah, we, your brother's dead, we know. Hurry up and figure it out and get on to the point you're trying to make. But yeah, I just didn't feel that this book got the message across as strongly as some of the other books I read. And because of that, I'm going to be giving it to someone else who might enjoy it more. So yeah. All right, next I have this little series. I have The Alchemist, The Sorceress, and The Necromancer all by Michael Scott. And I enjoyed these books when I read them almost a decade ago. When I was a teenager, I read these books, but I never finished the series, and I think there's like seven books. I stopped liking it towards the last, towards the third book. I think I borrowed the fourth one from a library, and I just, they were um, giving points of view from other characters that I really didn't care about and didn't empathize with, and so I just found those parts boring, and I just stopped liking a lot of the characters. I didn't like where they were going uh, in terms of character growth. I just, 
and it just got kind of boring and I lost interest. So that's another series that I'm going to be giving away to someone else. Goodbye. Next we have Wicked Lovely by M Melissa M Mar. This is another kind of girl gets kidnapped and taken to a fairy tale world, I believe. Yeah, it's kind of that kind of esque. And I read it like oh, five, six years ago and it, I enjoyed it. It was another book that like I thought was okay, but it doesn't hasn't stuck with me. I haven't gone back to read the rest of those books. So it's gonna be going to somebody else who could use it more than me. So there we go. Next I have Robert Graves' Goodbye to All That. This is a book that I had to read for college and I hated it. I didn't even, I, I couldn't even finish it. There was like 20 pages that I just couldn't even, the last 20 pages I just couldn't even finish. It's a biography and it took place during World War One and a lot of his life after that. And I just hated the author. I just hated Robert Graves. I did not like his personality, his writing style. I did not like this book at all. So I just kind of kept it with all my other college books, but I'm gonna be getting rid of this one. Uh, I have these next two books, Deception's Pawn and Deception's Princess, or this is the first one. Ah! And I finished these a few weeks ago, and I really didn't like them, which is sad because I have the author's other books. She has written, uh, the author is Esther Freisner, and she has written a series of duologies about princesses and about medieval princesses in different cultures, and I have liked all of her other books. But these ones, like, the plot was barely there, and the character we were following was not interesting, and it takes place in Ireland, so I was really excited for, like, some Irish fantasy, and it's a, a Queen Maeve as a princess, and I just thought that this story was gonna go somewhere interesting, and it never did, so I'm overall pretty disappointed with it. It had a few good elements to it, but overall, it just fell flat of everything that it was trying to prove and I was just really disappointed in this series so I'm not going to be keeping it around. And then I have The Voyage of Argo, A Polinus of Rhodes, a uh, Penguin Classics and I don't even know why I have this. I'm not interested in it so goodbye! Next we have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. This is just an extra copy that I have lying around and I don't need to have multiple copies of classics because they're so easy to buy. If I want, if I've lo if I lose my other copy, I can easily I can easily buy another one for like a buck or just borrow from the library. Like classics are just floating around everywhere. They're so easy to get that I don't need to hold on to just kind of middle of the road editions of them. If I have a really nice edition, then yeah. But this is just kind of another edition that I don't really need. So getting rid of that one. Next we have the Golden Stallion and the Wolf Dog, Rutherford G. Montgomery. I don't know why I have this book. It's a pretty addition, but I don't need it. It's it is kind of old and fraying as well. But overall, I'm just I just don't need it. So goodbye, Heidi by Johanna Spree. I'm not interested in reading this, and I just it was just kind of hanging around with the classics just just because. So goodbye to that one. And then we have the Hardy Boys, the House on the Cliff, like a mystery novel or something. I I don't really like mystery novels very much, and I don't know why this is floating. I don't know what this is about or anything about it. So going in the pile chicken soup for the kid's soul i don't know why this is floating around get into that one Ugh. next i have like three different dictionaries for some reason just because i was like oh hey the dictionary i'll keep it sure but i mean if i need to look up how to spell a word or what a word means then there's always the internet <laughs> so i don't really need to hold on to these copies so going in there away. Next we have David Copperfield by Charles Dickens and Charles Dickens' Great Expectations and I'm just not interested in keeping these. If I ever find that I need to read these or that I want to read these, I'll just go to the library or use one of my apps that I have for books. So, goodbye. Next we have a couple of nice classics here, The Swiss Family Robinson and Around the World in 80 Days and they're pretty but I just don't care about them, really, so, bye. I think that flew up when I hit them. Oh, next book I have, I'm going to be giving away to um, a friend of mine or my cousin, which whoever wants it, but that is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard. My mom got me this book for Christmas two years ago, and 
I just haven't been that interested in Rick Riordan's latest works. And this one, the character really felt like a, a carbon copy of Percy Jackson. And if I want to read about Percy Jackson, then I'll read Percy Jackson. I'm definitely not as interested in middle grade novels as I used to be. And I'm getting kind of tired of Rick Riordan's work. So I haven't kept up with all the latest books or anything. I'm not as fond of it as I used to be, although I still appreciate what he did for mythology, making mythology interesting for kids, and I loved reading his books as a teenager. They'll always have a special place in my heart, but his newest ones I just haven't gotten on board with, and I didn't like this one. I had to slog through it. I mean, I love the fact that we have a Muslim main character who's an awesome fighter. I loved her, but just a lot of the stuff that was happening, I just, I don't know. I don't know exactly. I just was not on board. Again, I'm not as into middle grade as I used to be, being an adult now. I just found that it was predictable and kind of boring in places, and yeah, I really had to push myself to finish it, so I'm not going to be reading Goodbye. This is going to a family member or a friend. We'll see whoever wants it. And now we're switching back to classics. I have Sophosilus, the Thebian place. Don't know why. Over here I have a bunch of Shakespeare, Othello, Taming of the Shrew, Winter's Tale, Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Much Ado About Nothing, and I'm not uh, like the biggest woohoo Shakespeare's amazing like his stories are good but I just don't really feel the need to keep these old books so oh also Midsummer's Night's Dream that's falling apart so uh, next we have another a copy of Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens and this one's falling apart as well so we're just getting rid of that The Adventures of Huck Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain no interest in it at all. Swashbuckler and When the Legends Die. These books are just hanging around. I don't know why, so. All right, next year I have a little duology, The Princess Academy and Princess Academy Palace of Stone. I read these books again years ago and, and overall I just, I found these books kind of childish. They are middle grade books, but I just found that the point that they were trying to make didn't work. And I just didn't really enjoy this series as much. And I felt like things that happened in the second book, that the wrap, that it was too easy. I felt like it just, it wrapped itself up too easy and neatly. And I wanted it to be a little bit more complica complicated, even for a middle grade novel. And I just feel like it was not as good as it could have been. So there we go. The next book I have is The School for Good and Evil by Soman Chemini. And I read this tr series, the trilogy, and I enjoyed parts of it, but there were a lot of parts of it that I really thought were weird. And it's kind of sad because this this story has a really interesting premise where these two girls live in this kind of like rundown like village and they get kidnapped and taken to the school for good and evil and their roles are switched in the books and the girl who thought she'd get into the school for good gets into the school for evil and the girl who thought she'd get into the school for evil gets into the school for good and I thought that that was really interesting. I just didn't feel like they did as good a job of it with this series as they could have. The series fell flat on a lot of the ideas and themes that it was that it had and I felt like it could have been so much better and I just didn't really enjoy it as much as I wanted to. Um, the first book was good, the second book got kind of weird at points, and the third book I don't really remember much but yeah that's just one that I wanted to like more than I did. And hopefully someone else picks it up who likes it more than me. Next we have the Artemis Fowl Files and Artemis Fowl The Arctic Intocent and Artemis Fowl the first book I think, yeah. And these ones I I have no interest in keeping because I didn't like Artemis Fowl. I didn't like the character. The books were interesting and I might check out the TV. I think it's a TV show that's coming out or a movie. I might check it. I'll probably check it out, but I just know that I'm not interested in reading the books because I didn't like Artemis Fowl in the books. I mean, I hear he gets better, but I just never really had that much interest in it. I vaguely remember reading the first book. I'm not sure if I finished it, but I just know I didn't really enjoy the main character and a lot of the stuff that happened was, wasn't my cup of tea. So yeah, that's another series that I feel like is really popular, so someone else might enjoy it more than me. The next little series I have here is two books, Splintered by A.G. Howard and Unhinged, and this is a Alice in Wonderland kind of retelling, and in the first book it's kind of she gets kidnapped to this Alice in Wonderland world, and I enjoyed the first book, but not enough for me to ever actually read the second book. I bought it because I was like, oh hey, I enjoyed the first book, so I'll read the second book eventually. <laughs> uh, 
and I never did and I don't think I'm going to. My friend finished this series, um, it's a little trilogy and she finished it and she said it was really weird and I trust her opinion so I'm not going to be continue with this series or ever get around to reading this book. That's another one that's going away! Next we have Rebel Angels by Libba Bray. I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of her books. I've tried to get into some of her other ones, but I didn't enjoy them that much. And this is the second one, I think, trilogy. Uh, I don't remember much, although I don't think I enjoyed the third book that much. The ending was really weird, and it didn't leave, like, a huge impression on me. I'm not going to be buying the other books or anything, so I don't need to keep one book, the middle book, in a series that I'm never going to read again. Here we have The Warrior Hair by Cinda Williams Chima, and... Oh! The Enchanter Hair, I got this from a library sale, if you can tell, and I enjoyed the first book. I actually haven't even read this book, I think it's the second one, I think. It doesn't even say. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I enjoyed this book, but not enough for, again, not enough for it to leave a, like, a really decent impression, and I highly doubt that I'm ever going to finish this series, because I never even bothered to figure out if this is the second, third, or fourth, whatever book it is. Here is another little series that I just never kept up with, and I just know that it's better off if I give it to someone else, instead of taking up unneeded room on my shelves. The Princess of the Midnight Ball by Jessica Day George. Don't remember much about this, I think I enjoyed it, but it didn't leave an impression, so boop. Getting rid of that book. Next we have The Museum of Heartbreak by Meg Letter. I think I gave this book three stars. It was a cute little rom-com about a teenager and her growing up and her store and her, her growing up and like meeting guys and falling in love and stuff and it, it, it was cute again but didn't leave much of an impression on me. I think I got it for like three or four bucks and I was just like hey it looks cute I'll buy it. I like the cover but I don't have space. <laughs> I'm not gonna have space to keep books just because I like the cover so it's going away. Boop. Next we have Reverie Clearly Ramona the Pest, Beverly Clearly Ramona Quimberly Age 8. Um, yeah, don't know much about these books. Read them as a kid, I think, and yeah, don't need to keep them because, again, left no impression. So, Boop. here's another Beverly Clearly, Henry Hugues. Um, yeah, sure, I enjoyed these books, but I feel like it's so much better to give them to someone else. And the next one we have is How to Train Your Dragon by Cressida Caldwell and then How to Speak Dragonese number nine and I enjoyed this book. It was cute and fun but I have no interest in keeping up with the series or reading the, or borrowing the other books from the library and reading them so again just so much better if I just give this to someone else. I mean I love the movies. The How to Train Your Dragon trilogy is one of the best animated trilogies out there in my mind but they are very I know that they are very different from the books. I'm not going to be reading these books so I'm not going to be continuing with the series so all right we're almost done. Oh crap okay. I have these two Dolphin Diaries into the Blue and Touching the Waves. Uh, I enjoyed them because I enjoyed books about dolphins and animals but um, I just don't feel the need to keep them, so... Alright, we have The Shakespeare Stealer by Gary Blackwood. I actually really enjoyed this series, but uh, this is an extra copy that we have floating around for some reason, so I'm gonna keep giving this away as well. Oh my gosh, it's so many books. And the next one we have is The Indian in the Cupboard by Lena Reed Banks. And I don't know, but the title kind of bothers me, and I just don't know if this book is that good. I don't know what it's about or anything. Yeah, so I'm just gonna toss this on the pile because I don't know why I even have this book or what it's about. Anything about it. Who knows. Next one is Leaving Thumps in the Gateway to Foo by Obert Sky. I tried to read some of Obert Sky's books and I didn't like them so I'm just gonna give this one away. So on to the pile. Next one we have is Atlantis the Lost Empire. <laughs> this is like a junior noveliz novelization that they used to sell out that they still sell out with for like Disney movies. So it was from the 90s, I think. Uh, do you guys ever remember Atlantis The Lost Empire? Do you remember that movie? It was it was a pretty good movie actually. It didn't it could have been better, but it was an interesting movie that I enjoyed as a kid. So when I saw this I was like, oh that's so cool. It has like posters in it from the movies and stuff. But uh yeah, it's just not one that I need to keep. So I don't really I don't really like novelizations of movies. Next one is we have Balto, Balto and the Great Race by Elizabeth Cody Kimmel. 
Again, I love books with dogs and animals, um, but I just, this one didn't leave a big impression on me. It doesn't bring me joy or anything, so, oh, that's a big pile. Ah. Next, we have Firestar and Ice Fire by Chris DeLacy. This is a series that I don't think I ever finished, and it's about dragons, so that's really surprising because anything to do with dragons, I love. I love dragons, and I've read so many books with dragons. Um, and I usually, um, dragons are just mythical creatures that I love so much, but this one, I just don't remember much about it, and I didn't like it as much as I wanted to, so I just filled up my bed, my camera, so I had to take it down, and I don't remember what I was talking about before. Um, I had these books, okay? So, yeah, was not the biggest fan of this series, and I thought it was okay, but I don't remember much about it, and it didn't really make it, didn't really stand out to me, so, on the pile... The next one I have is Amber Brown by Paula Densinger. Again, another middle grade book that I bought, probably got from Scholastics that I enjoyed, but didn't leave a huge impression. Doesn't bring me joy now, so... Wow, that's a big pile of books. The next two I have are Going Solo and The Witches by Roald Dahl. Um, I enjoyed The Witches. I think there's actually a movie based off it that I saw that was made like over a decade ago or something. It's all a little vague in my mind, but a series does not bring me joy. So, I don't remember much about it, and it's going to somebody else who maybe will like it more than I do. Then we have here, The Miserable Mill. This is the fourth book in the series of unfortunate events, and I have all 13 of them, but I have an extra copy of this that I don't really need to keep. So, we're just gonna throw that in the pile there. Next, we have The Snow Spider Trilogy by Jenny Nemo. And I, I think I, I like this one, this series a lot. I remember really enjoying it. But I don't think I'd enjoy it as much now as if, if I reread it and I don't remember much about it. It doesn't hold a special place in my heart. I'm not nostalgic about this little trilogy. And yeah, I think somebody else might enjoy it more than me, so gonna give it, gonna put it on the pile. Next is The Wishbone, The Adventures of Wishbone Salty Dog by Brad Strickland, inspired by Treasure Island. Um, of course, uh, there's a dog with a pick, so child me probably was like oh dog yay i'll read a book with a dog about it and yeah i don't remember much about it and i think someone else will enjoy it more i say that about all these books this one i have is that's what friends are for by Joni hilton this was a cute novel about two young women who were friends and like the trials and tribulations that they went through and i enjoyed it but not enough to keep on my shelves we have a book of poetry and yeah nothing really to say about that so I don't know anything about it, so it's just going over there. Next we have, whoop, Ludo and the Star Horse. Of course it has horses on it, so yeah, this is one that I don't even know why I have or what it's doing on my shelves. We're on to the last series that I have. Okay, so let's put one book at a time. Book one, Magic. Book two, Flight. Book three, Physic. Book four, Quest. This is a series that I enjoyed as a youth. And, but I never finished the series because I stopped liking around the fourth book. It got kind of boring and I just got, I just lost interest. So never gonna finish it, never gonna finish the series. It doesn't hold a s really like a special place in my heart. So I, I think that someone else will enjoy it more than me because it's not a bad middle grade series. And I think there's some kids out there who would like it a lot more than I do. And I don't wanna take enough old space on my shelf. So many books. I'm actually a little sweaty. <laughs> oh, but boy, oh boy, once I get all these out, I'm going to feel so much better about myself. Because, you know, I used to be one of those people who would keep all my books, which is why I ended up with over 500 books in my shelves. Like a year ago, I went through and I got rid of some. But I really decided that I needed to go and thoroughly cleanse my bookshelves. And honestly, it feels so good to have gotten these books off my shelves. And I think for me personally that... I don't have, if, if a book that's on my shelf is not one that, you know, brings me joy, makes me happy, it's not something that I need taking up space in my uh, life. I think that there's so many, that, that it's a really good thing to donate books and give away to other people who could enjoy them a lot more. But yeah, that's my unhaul for today. Oh, feels so good. Feels like my shoulders have been lifted, I feel cleansed. 
and I'm just happy these books are gonna go to a better home, someone who will enjoy them more than me. So that's all for this video today. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this. I'm sorry if it was ridiculously long. Thank you if you stayed till the end, but that's all for now. So yeah, if you wanna do any of the shenanigans below, comment, subscribe, like, all that stuff, you know what to do. And that's all for me today, so bye.